Hi, welcome to No Kill in Motion. I'm David Smith from No Kill Colorado, here with Alan Rosenberg from New Jersey Animal Observer and Aubrey Cavanaugh from, Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. Sorry about that, Aubrey. Um, and today I want to talk about pet acquisition in shelters and where some shelters actually have um, less of a certain type of animal that people are looking for than others. Now, I see this as a very localized problem. It's not a national problem. We have more than enough pets in our shelters, cats and dogs, and I'm sure, um, you know, rabbits and ferrets and others that need homes. So the, there's there's been talk out there that was there was there was a uh, um, one panel out there that was talking about you know should shelters get into breeding we've seen this a couple of times in the last year or two that this conversation happened my answer is no period no there's other solutions and I think we should start finding those solutions so I know that both of you have been watching this this subject quite a bit um, uh, and. I want to see where you're coming at it from and how do we solve the problem? I mean, the simple one for me is transfer, but do we have anything else that we can actually help make sure that we save every healthy, treatable pet in the nation before we look at any other <laughs> pet acquisition strategies? Alan, why don't you start? Well, I'll start with saying um, the purpose of a shelter is not to fill um, adopter demand. It's not to give the public the exact pet they want. The purpose of a shelter is to rescue and save animals that need to be saved, that without the shelter they die or otherwise be harmed. Um, so when we look at this issue here, um, my view is that before a shelter starts to help animals from elsewhere, they need to create a no-kill community locally, which I define as a high 90% live release rate range for dogs and a low 90% live release rate range for cats. And a lot, most of the places where transport is happening is that's not there yet. They're not there yet. So I believe that the resources should be focused on that. Now, I'm not a purist. Um, I think a little transport into these areas is probably not going to make that much of a difference. But the reality is those that transport don't do it on a small scale. They do it on a very large scale and they do mass transports. And they focus all their energy on bringing animals in that are easy to adopt from out of state. Um, and from, you know, I, I understand why a source shelter wants to transport. And, I'm not, and, I'm, and I think it's okay to do it in a temporary or short-term basis while they develop the no-kill equation programs to responsibly reduce intake and increase live outcomes to ensure that they become a no-kill community. But most source shelters that do transport just find it easier to ship the animals out on a truck than develop the no-kill equation programs. And the destination shelters that bring the animals in, they do it, number one, to raise money for because they make great fundraising stories. And number two, they adopt out really easy to adopt animals for high fees. And by the way, those animals mask the local killing that they're doing in their own shelters because it artificially increases their live release rate. So my view is that um, until you do that, I don't really see transport as the as a solution because I think it's just a Band-Aid. Now, I think once shelters do reach no-kill, then yes, transport should be done. Um, and, and even transport from other countries if you know the whole country became no-kill. So I'm not opposed to that. I just think it's premature. Um, and this idea of a pet shortage that these folks are talking about is just complete BS. Um, yes, there may be a shortage of hypoallergenic dogs and and, and, and these, these, these designer dogs, but adopter demand can be shifted and when you appeal to an adopter's heart to, uh, you know, and their deep desire to uh, save a life. So the whole idea behind, behind shelter breeding is just not right. And I think the focus should be the no-kill equation. Well, I, you know, you, you made me think that, you know, also in shelters, they could change their model not to you know, acquiring more animals to meet customer demand. But it's like, we have animals, we can increase our help for people that need, uh, you know, medical uh, uh, assistance, um, behavior assistance. So you have less animals. There are other things that you're a services organization, right? Especially if you're tax funded. That's the way I see it. Aubrey, and I know tax funding, something you always bring up, but take, give me your thoughts on this pet acquisition and what we do about it. 
Um, I'm going to try to choose my words carefully here. Um, I'm with Alan. I, I agree transport um, on a limited scale, but not as a way of outsourcing an issue without handling the problem at the source location. And we, I know we've talked about this before. Um, I mean, it's, you know, if you ship thousands of animals from a source to a target location, that's never going to end unless you deal with the reason that so many animals are at the source location that need assistance. So that's number one. Um, number two, this whole discussion that's going on about the concept of shelters getting in the business of breeding animals, it's not only no, it's hell no, absolutely not, and never. And I've, I've read some things where people are saying that this conversation is premature. No, it's not premature. It's never going to be appropriate because like Alan said, shelters don't exist to be there essentially to help people acquire any type of pet that they want. I mean, they're a safety net for animals in need. Now, having said that, um, if there's somebody that comes into a shelter and they're, they walk around and they're looking for a particular type of dog or cat, or maybe even a smaller animal, maybe they want a rabbit and that shelter doesn't have any rabbits. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that shelter helping that customer, because it is a customer-based business, helping that customer find an animal they want, whether it's with an, another organization locally, like a, maybe a rescue group does. Maybe there's a rescue group that deals with nothing but rabbits. I mean, there's one in Huntsville. I think it's called Huntsville Friends of Rabbits. So if Huntsville Animal Services doesn't have rabbits, well, let's refer that person to Huntsville Friends of Rabbits. Or maybe if a person is looking for I don't know, an older dog or a smaller dog, um, they can get on the websites of those organizations or even get on Pet Finder, which is a wonderful tool, and help somebody find an animal they want, whether it's local or not. I mean, I was joking before you started recording. I mean, I'm reminded of the movie, you know, The Miracle on 34th Street, which of course is a holiday film with the whole concept of if somebody wants something and they can't find it at Macy's, well, help them get to Gimbel's because maybe <laughs> Gimbel's has it, right? So help those people find that animal. And that animal may be five miles away. That animal may be 100 miles away. That animal may be 300 miles away. But if somebody really wants to adopt a rescue, um, they're, they're willing to, to, to make that connection to get that animal. When we were looking for a dog a few years ago, um, we were looking at dog, I'm in Alabama, we were looking at dogs in North and South Carolina. I mean, we were willing to drive that far potentially to adopt a dog. And I think a lot of other people are the same way. So rather than transport of moving them in mass from one place to another, if we are trying to help with ac acquisition, breeding, absolutely not and never. Um, but related to helping them find an animal they want, we, we can do that and they, they can go make inquiry about that animal in another location. As you said, we've talked about this before. I mean, I, I say it all the time about transfer. I live in an interesting state in Colorado. Um, we have, um, I almost hate to say this out loud, but I'm going to say it. We have 40,000 more adopters every year than we actually need to save every healthy or treatable pet in the state. And we're not doing that. Going back to some of the things that Alan was saying, we need to do that. And then I, we should absolutely help our neighbors, but we shouldn't help them to the point of, a system of just constantly bringing them in, right? They need to be making the change. The same shelter, you know, in Houston for years, sending thousands of animals from one shelter to Colorado every year for over five years, maybe longer, but I haven't been tracking it past that. It is insane that they're not making any changes, but we're out of time. Um, thank you so much. This was great. I'm David Smith from No Kill Colorado. I'm with Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. I'm Rosenberg. From the New Jersey Animal Observer, this is No Killing Motion. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week.